This is definitely the film that scared the shit out of me. I've seen hundreds of horror films and I never thought I'd lose sleep over a moth. The way the monster appears in the film still gives me goosebumps. It's like a giant caterpillar, with two thick arms replacing its legs. The monster's entire lower body is a digestive tract for consuming humans, and this creature seems to have a particular taste for women. The story takes place during an archaeological excavation in 1963. They accidentally opened a cave and removed a square coffin from inside. The moment the coffin was exposed to daylight, a woman in an apartment suddenly heard a roaring sound. In front of Simona, two wet footprints appeared mysteriously, dripping water. As Simona turned her head, the footprints disappeared just as mysteriously, startled. Simona stood up only to see a square box at her door. At that moment, a pair of pale eyes appeared behind her. When Simona died, the lights in the building returned to normal. At the same time, a group of stowaways arrived. A woman named Amber came to the United States dreaming of making it rich, but life humbled her, and she started working in a factory. Unaware, Amber moved into the troubled apartment to save on rent. Red, the landlord, although a strong man, only rented to female tenants, including Amber. There were only two tenants in the building. The facilities were a bit old, but the price was cheap. Even though Red asked for a month's rent in advance, Amber decided to stay. That night, strange things began to happen. As Amber was drifting off to sleep, she seemed to dream of her mother. The moment Amber closed her eyes, there really was a hand stroking her back, but Amber didn't notice it at all. The next day, Amber got up early to go to the factory, coincidentally meeting the second tenant, Freja. On the stairs, Amber greeted her warmly. Red is full of shit. Freja's words left Amber somewhat puzzled. As Amber turned to leave for work, she failed to notice several eerie figures standing in the hallway, their eyes glinting with white light, to escape her dire circumstances. Amber worked hard to save money, hoping to attend university locally. However, as a Spaniard, she needed a local birth certificate for admission, so she asked a colleague for a backdoor favor. Then, Kinsey suddenly announced that the middleman had raised the price, an additional $2,000, which would take Amber at least another year to earn. Fortunately, Amber had a cousin, Beto. In the area, Beto promised to arrange a decent job for Amber as long as she got the birth certificate. When Amber happily returned to the apartment, she heard noises from the neighboring room. Weren't there only two tenants here? Curious. Amber went to investigate. Next door was a firmly locked door, marked with deep scratch marks. As Amber puzzled over this, Red suddenly appeared. Amber tried to get her advance rent back, hoping the money could help her start school sooner. But Red naturally refused, claiming he had spent all the money, with no other choice. Amber returned to her room to plan her next steps, when she heard cries for help coming from the ventilation duct. Freja lived just below her. Amber knocked on Freja's door, which was unlocked and empty clearly. Freja had left the apartment. On the door frame, Amber noticed a green powder, thinking it was just her imagination. Amber left. But once again, an eerie figure appeared behind her. In a daze, Amber dreamt of her mother again, but this time, her mother kept staring into a corner. The four-sided box appeared in Amber's dream. Amber didn't understand what these dreams meant and went to work at the factory as usual. Then, a butterfly flew by, and strange things started happening. This time, Amber felt a real touch and thought it was a prank by a colleague. After work, Amber met with Kinsey again to ask how things were going. Seeing Amber's efforts, Kinsey agreed to lend her the remaining $2,000, but only if Amber would pay back double if she ever made it big. Amber happily agreed and naively handed over all her savings to Kinsey. Walking home, Amber fantasized about soon receiving her birth certificate, but upon returning to the apartment, she witnessed a bizarre scene. Red was headbutting the basement iron door. Being a girl, Amber didn't dare ask what was happening and hurried back to her rental. Unexpectedly, a figure appeared in front of her room as the hallway light turned on. After saying something, the figure mysteriously disappeared. Curious, Amber stepped out only to meet two women in the kitchen. They were Petra and Maria, the new tenants. Red also came over to arrange their accommodation. Just as Amber was about to return to her room, she noticed Red's door was ajar and curiously walked in. There were many butterfly specimens inside, along with a photo of Red as a child. But what caught her attention was a tape recorder. Amber picked up the headphones and heard something resembling a sacrificial ritual, seemingly offering some sort of protection. The room also contained notes on the sacrificial ritual and the square box from Amber's dreams. Suddenly, an accident happened. Amber sensed someone in the doorway, but when she looked up, 
the figure had disappeared. She quickly put the photo back in its place. As Amber left, the figure appeared again. The next day, when Amber returned to the factory, she learned that Kinsey had resigned. It meant that Amber's entire savings had been swindled, left with no choice. Amber returned to the apartment. As she pondered what to do next, a cry for help suddenly came from the drain. Amber quickly turned off the tap, and the voice became clearer. Then, a figure walked in the door, startling Amber. It looked like Freja from downstairs. In panic, Amber fled her room and bumped into Red who was passing by. When Amber asked about Freja, Red said she had moved out two days ago, but who was the figure she just saw? When the lights suddenly went out, a butterfly flew out of the basement and flew all the way to Amber. As she turned around, the butterfly that had just died took flight. Amber. <sighs> it turned out to be just a dream, but it felt so real, and the door was open, she was sure she had locked it when she came in. Amber cautiously stood up. A figure was standing across from her, staring intently at Amber. For the first time, Amber saw a real ghost. The ghost seemed to be scared of something. As Amber looked back, another ghost appeared. <laughs> Angrily trying to drag the girl back. This scene was shockingly intense. Two ghosts fighting right in front of Amber. Curiously, Amber followed them. The girl kept pleading. Please, Mary. Please let me... Such a realistic scene would drive any sane person away. Amber quickly packed her bags, intending to leave the apartment. Before leaving, she sought out Red to get her deposit back. But when she opened the door, it was a burly man who greeted her. Becker, Red's brother, said his brother was not there and then closed the door. Amber, not wanting to stay a moment longer, had to find shelter in a cheap motel as a heavy snow began to fall outside. However, with not enough money even for a meal, Amber was thrown out. She ended up at a subway station, trying to get through the night, but the lights started flickering, and the once crowded subway was now eerily empty. As panic set in, Amber's mother appeared strangely and directed her to look towards something. The square box reappeared, and a monster was trying to crawl out of it. This was the second time Amber dreamt about this box. Unexpectedly, Red came looking for her. He tricked Amber saying he left in a hurry without his money. If Amber wanted her rent refunded, she would have to follow him back to the apartment first. To get her rent back, Amber naively followed him back to the apartment. Red told her the money was in her room. But when Amber got there, there was no money only Red's lecherous gaze and his two-meter tall brother, Becker. Terrified, Amber curled up in a corner. Becker demanded Amber to open her mouth. Seeing their violence, Amber dared not resist and was locked in the room. Soon after, Petra and Maria came looking, obviously frightened and seemingly threatened too. Amber suggested they escape. Petra revealed that Red was always guarding the first floor, near the entrance to the basement. When she hears about the basement Amber thinks about yesterday's screams for help and suspects that Red has locked up the previous residence in the basement. What have you seen? I see this box. A stone box. Seeing Petra nod. Amber realized that they all had similar dreams. She dreamt of her mother, and Petra dreamt of her son. These were the things they deeply longed for. They suspected the source of these dreams was the box, which was likely hidden in the basement, as cries for help from a woman could always be heard through the vent. At that moment, 14 ghosts appeared collectively, eerily staring at Amber as if warning her to flee quickly. Petra and Maria disappeared miraculously, replaced by Amber's mother. Someone pulled Amber out of the illusion. At this time, Red and his brother were capturing Petra and Maria. Amber rushed to help but was thrown out by Becker like a small chicken. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and Amber was locked up again. It turned out to be Beto, who had come looking for her as they had previously agreed to help Amber find a job. But she had never shown up. Beto asked if Amber lived there, and just as Red was about to deny it, Beto saw Amber's coat through the crack of the door. After seeing Amber, Beto barged into the apartment, which unfortunately became the place of his demise. Becker attacked Beto so violently that his fate was uncertain, and Amber was locked up with chains. Red applied a green powder to Amber, claiming that all his actions were to cure his brother, Becker. It turned out Red had been harming female tenants in an attempt to heal Becker. Amber tried to awaken the goodness within Red. Surprisingly, Red really unlocked her chains, but in the next second, Becker walked in. Blood was smeared on Amber's face by Becker, 
And then she was carried out of the room by him. Along the way, all the harmed ghosts appeared, revealing that their repeated appearances were actually attempts to scare Amber away. But it was too late. Amber was thrown into the basement. By then, Maria's head had already been consumed by the monster. Amber was tied to an altar. After that, Becker opened the box. And inside was a deep passage that seemed to connect to another dimension. After everything, Becker closed the steel door. Footsteps started coming from the passageway. And countless butterflies circled around. As if welcoming their mother. At the critical moment, the steel door was suddenly opened. Beta was not dead. He's being held captive in the basement. As they were escaping, they found the area hung with headless female corpses. They didn't dare to stay and broke through another steel door. Which surprisingly led to the end of the passage. Amber saw herself sitting beside her mother's hospital bed. And the Amber in that space also saw the outside world. The current Amber was still chained and quietly lying on the sacrificial altar. A pair of huge hands emerged from the passageway. Followed by a woman covering her face. Slowly appearing. The monster landed. And the Amber in the other space sensed it. As Amber hesitated. The monster finally revealed its true form. It was like a giant caterpillar with four arms. Gently stroking Amber's face. The lower body of the monster was a gaping maw. Just as Amber was about to be devoured. The Amber in the other space chose a different outcome. She smothered her mother to death with a pillow. And the real Amber also woke up. Consequently, the monster gave up on feeding and retreated back into the box. Amber, not taking any chances, sealed the box again. Staggering upstairs, she passed Red's room and suddenly saw two treasured Makua hoodles. Amber decided to start fighting back. At this moment, Becker felt something was amiss. Usually, his wounds would heal quickly while the monster fed. But this time there was no such reaction. He asked his brother to check the situation. Just as Red opened the door, Becker also stood up. Although he was also cut by Amber. But his strength was obviously much stronger than Red's. Becker broke Amber's ankle with a stomp. While turning to pick up a weapon, Petra suddenly attacked him. She tried to run but was caught and thrown off the building by Becker. Then Becker went after Amber. During the struggle, Amber grabbed a shard of a weapon. Becker, looking at Amber with lust, thinking the monster wouldn't mind her purity as it only consumed heads, was caught off guard when Amber fought back and sliced his artery with the shard. Becker never imagined he would be defeated by a woman. Amber returned to the room, picked up the Makua Weasel, and prepared to leave. But then she heard a noise from the room. Red was not entirely dead. Looking at him wickedly, she tied Red to the altar. It turned out the monster didn't just eat women. Men were also on the menu. After settling everything, Amber left the basement. She intended to leave this place of trouble. But at the door, she saw Red spirit. Only those consumed by the monster lingered in the apartment. At that moment, Amber's broken ankle miraculously healed. She realized the significance of the sacrifice. The monster granted certain powers to its host. At this moment, Amber felt as though she could kill a tiger with her bare hands. Thinking back on the hardship she endured after smuggling herself into the United States. And the grueling work in the factory for a mere few thousand dollars. She figured it might be better to stay and become the next boss lady here. The story ends here. The movie's setting is shocking. And the plot twist in the alternate space is mind-bending. Reflecting the desires of the human heart. In the other space, Amber chose to kill her mother. Thus controlling her own desires. Leading the monster to retreat back through the passage. Monsters pray through human desire. So remember to recognize reality and not be blinded by desire. Stay tuned for more exciting content in my next episode.